Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am your host, Angel Ferguson, and we thank you so very much for joining us today. It is always a honor and a pleasure to come and spend some time with you. And we love to stay connected with you. There are several ways in which you can stay connect connected with us here via the radio station by calling in to 813-336-2181. Our website is www.afergusonswrp.simplesite.com. You can also tune in to our television station via our YouTube channel, The Balance of Life, also via viloud.com's TV guide. Starting Tuesday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 7 p.m., we invite you to join us for Partners in Prayer. James 5 and 16 says, Pray ye one for another that ye may be healed. Once again, starting Tuesday, this Tuesday, from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., we will have partners in prayer. The call in number is 515-604-9825. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to the balance of life for truly this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We are super excited about several changes that we are making here at the radio station as we are incorporating the television station, the channel for the balance of life. You can now view via our YouTube channel, our website, valloud.com and soon we will reach out and share with you some other regions in which you can tune into the balance of life whether it is on radio or via internet television before we get into our word for the day which we're going to look at not of tradition just wanted to share with you our programming and broadcasting schedule. Our radio ministry here for the Balance of Life are Tuesdays through Thursdays, 12.30 p.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and on Saturdays from 3 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Our television ministry for the Balance of Life Monday and Friday, 11.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And every Tuesday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., Partners in Prayer, the call-in number 515-604-9825. And you can check out the broadcasting schedule for The Balance of Life via our website at www.afergusonswrp.simplesite.com. Let us have a word of prayer before we go into our word for today. Not of tradition. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you today humbling ourselves both in spirit and Lord God, all of our thoughts, all of our ambitions. We humble ourselves before you and under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. 
that we shall decrease and that you shall increase, Father God. And Lord God, every word that we share here today, that it may be for edification of the body of Christ, that we all grow unto spiritual maturity in you. Amen. Sharing a word of God today. God is calling us to true repentance of the heart and not of tradition of men. And as I was over in St. Mark, the seventh chapter, as I began to read that last night and then again on this morning, I was led over to the book of Joel, the second chapter, and then over into Acts, the second chapter, the 16th through the 47th verse. And of course, we were able to tie in Second Chronicles 7 and 14. God is after repentance of the heart. And not of tradition. Tradition will not get us or secure our place in the kingdom of heaven. Tradition doesn't even honor God. It's with the heart of obedience and faithfulness and being true that brings him honor. Tradition is another word for ritual. And we can prepare ourselves for a ritual, but that's only to prepare for that ritual. Where is my heart? Because after after we step out of traditions and rituals, then some may feel that they can go and, and, and they can continue at any kind of way because they have performed the tradition and the ritual. But on today, I came by to tell you not so. He is looking for faithfulness and obedience from the heart. True repentance. Ah, oh my God, what an awesome word today. And as we go over into St. Mark, the seventh chapter, what defiles a man? It says, then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes, which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashed hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands, oft eat not, holding to the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be, which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels and of tables. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders? but eat bread with unwashed hands. He answered and said unto them, Well, hath Esaias prophesied of you, hypocrites? As it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. I'll read that again. This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is is far from me. What's in a man, what's in the heart of a man, is what comes out. And we've been talking about over the past couple of weeks, and I know that as we continue in our our time with God, it's such a precious, precious thing to spend time in the presence of of God and, and with the Holy Spirit. 
we have to be purged. And the Spirit of God, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, cannot fully dwell and operate if there is malice, self-righteousness, uncleanliness, hypocrisy, division, gossip, and the list goes on and on. If those things are in our hearts, the fullness of God cannot operate in our lives. And so we have to go through this purging process because we don't serve God off of tradition. Until we came into the knowledge of Christ and we developed our own relationship with him and we allowed him to mold us and make us, you developed your own way of praise versus seeing someone praise in a certain way and you felt that you like it and then you started to do it. Honey, that was under ritual and tradition. But is that the dance that God gave you? Is that the praise he placed in your heart? And when we assemble ourselves together in the house of God, because I'm praising him from my heart, there's no need to pump the body of Christ up. Why? Because we're praising him from our hearts. Not because someone said, clap your hands and stand and, and move this way and move that way. But it's in my heart and I owe him all the praise and all of the honor. And it comes from my heart. That praise happens long before I get there. It happened long before Sunday morning. It's going on all week long. We're talking about not of tradition. A calling of true repentance of the heart and not of tradition of men. We'll be back in just a moment. And welcome back. We are talking about not of tradition, a calling of true repentance of the heart and not of tradition of man. We're looking at scriptures, St. Mark, the seventh chapter, Joel, the second chapter, the book of Acts, second chapter, 16th through the 47th verse. And 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. And for time's sake, I'm going to say that we will allow this to be a part two series. Because I know that we will not get to all of those areas in our allotted time. And we want to allow the Holy Spirit to have his way and to take his way have his way as we minister this word. It is so important that we step out of tradition. Fellowship with Christ is every day. Fellowship with the body of Christ as you assemble yourselves together to come into that building, that's the set time. But fellowship with Christ is every single day. Fellowship with your brothers and sisters in Christ can be every day as well as led by the Holy Spirit. But we are deemed, we are commissioned, we are obligated to fellowship with Christ every single day. As we continue in Mark, the seventh chapter, and we are now at the seventh verse, it says, how be it in vain do they worship me? teaching of doctrines, the commandments of men for laying aside the commandments of God. I'll read that again. How be it in vain do they worship me teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men 
for laying aside the commandments of God. Ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such things like this ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandments of God, that ye may keep your own traditions. In other words, he says, Have no other God before me. You won't keep that commandment, but you'll keep the tradition of washing pots and pans and brazen things in hands, or dusting your feet at the door, but you won't keep the commandments given unto you. You won't love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, and soul. You won't steal away for a time of, of fasting and prayer and mourning and weeping and, and interceding on others' behalf. But you'll keep the tradition of wearing, wearing a collar and apparel that make you look holier than thou but your heart is far from it. Your heart is far from it. Verse 10 says, For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, If a man shall say to his father or mother, It is Corban, that is to say, a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things ye do. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand there is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him but the things which come out of him those are they that defile the man if any man have ears to hear let him hear the food that they ate or the fact that they had not washed their hands was not what defiled them what defiled them is that they did not keep the commandments of God. That holds precedence over any and everything. Am I following the commandments of God? Am I doing according to the word? When being led by the Holy Spirit, am I submissive unto the authority of the Holy Spirit to do as directed. Remember, God is speaking to his people, to the body of Christ, to the church, through the Holy Spirit. But are we listening? Before we go on to break, are we neglecting to do some things because they're not tradition, because they're, they're out of the norm? We have a long way to go. But I thank God that we serve a, a, a God of grace and mercy. A God that chastises his people. Why? Because he loves us. And he gives us opportunities. Such as repentance. Repentance. And when we return, we're going to finish up down through the 23rd verse as time permits. And then we're going to go over to Joel, the second chapter. And like I said, this is going to be a two-part series, not of tradition, a calling of true repentance of the heart and not tradition of man. We'll be back in just a moment.
And we are back here on the balance of life. If you are just tuning in, we thank you so very much for joining us here. There are several ways in which you can stay connected with us via our radio ministry, which airs here Tuesday through Thursdays, 1230 p.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Saturdays, 3 p.m. to 330 p.m. Our television ministry, Mondays and Fridays, 11.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. You can view us via our YouTube channel, viloud.com. Just check out their TV guide. You can also visit our website, www.afergusonswrp.simplesite.com. Tuesdays, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., Partners in Prayer, that call in number 515-604-9825. If you are looking to reach out to us for our schedule for radio ministry, television ministry, the School of Ministry and Mentoring, Please call us at 813-336-2181. Let us go back into the word of God. We are over in Mark, St. Mark, the 7th chapter, the 17th verse. Our subject for today is not of tradition, a calling of true repentance of the heart and not of tradition of man. Verse 17 says, And when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he said unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive? That whatsoever thing from without enter into the man, it cannot defile him. He's talking about the food. Because it entereth not into his heart. There is a big difference. Of the things that can defile us. It's the things that enter into our hearts. And whatsoever is in your heart that is what is going to come out of you. That is what can defile you. And so if you have a just a, a spirit of, of anger and that's all you pursue, if you only pursue being argumentative and short-tempered, if you pursue that you like gossip and you always find yourself somewhere where gossip is connected, you're either listening to it, you started it, you, 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 you joined in on it. That's in your heart. And that's what's going to come out of you. That is what defiles a man. Malice, hatred, fornication, adultery. Unfaithfulness doubt if those things are in you that is what's going to come out you could be a negative person because all your thoughts and what's in you is connected around negativity so no matter what you hear that is positive you have a but you have a well but I believe the report of the Lord he said that which he said, that which he sent out to do, it shall accomplish. I stand on the word of God. And so I do not have room and space for the butts. I don't have that he will send whom he will. To call us all unto true repentance of the heart and not out of the tradition of man. Get out of the tradition of 
Sunday morning is your time to worship God. Worship him every day. Worship him in spirit and in truth. Get out of that tradition that you have to have this beautiful Bible that you want to go and you want to take to church and the pages are stuck together because you haven't opened it up. We are supposed to have a daily partake of him, our daily bread. I need my portion every day. And there are times I get a little greedy that I wake up before the sun is up. I seek him early and I open my word. And even when the sun comes up, guess what? I go back to my word. I need my daily portions. If you don't want your daily portions, I will take them. Verse 20 says, and he said, that which cometh out of the man that defiles the man from within out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within the heart and defile the man. Let us be careful. Amen. What about what I absolutely love about allowing God to lead and guide us is when I opened up my Bible this morning it landed on Joel the second chapter I had already read Mark the seventh chapter and here I was led over to Joel the second chapter talking about the coming of the day of the Lord the call of repentance deliverance to follow repentance and then gone over to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and so that what comes out of us defiles us we must be purged we must go through the process of true repentance not self-righteousness but true repentance I'm going to start at the 12th verse in the second chapter of Joel. Therefore also now saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. And rend your heart and not your garments. And I'm trying to get these two scriptures in before we go off the air. And turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth him of his evil. And we're going to stop right there. Go over to Joel and we'll meet you back here tomorrow.